Hey, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Falcon and the Winter Soldier, specifically episode one. So I watched episode one, uh, I think two weeks back now, and uh, I really, really enjoyed the episode. And I also have watched episode two at this point. So I'll be creating a second episode for that as well. But uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, let's talk about it. Let's discuss uh, week to week as to what my thoughts are on these episodes. I'm very, very excited and very happy with what the show is like so far. And I'm very, very curious to see where things move forward. So let's, uh, let's jump right into this. So to start off, we have a, a comparison that obviously came to mind for me was comparing the first two episodes of uh, this show to what WandaVision has been over the past month or so, right? And WandaVision was a very, very widely different show. And I think that what's consistent between these two is, uh, is that they're very clearly um, high quality and very, very well done shows. And I would say that these are like on a different level from what we've seen from most Marvel shows as of uh, as of like ever, really. Uh, I think that uh, they very much feel like films. And uh, I think that's something that's really, really awesome to see. And I'm very glad that the, the level of quality is up to par with what I would expect from an MCU film. It's like, it's basically a multi-part film. There are a small number of episodes for each of these seasons uh, of these new shows. And, uh, I think that's been very, very good because it's been keeping everything very highly focused on pushing the plot forward and um, focusing on key characters that are very important. That being said, let's jump into the actual scenes from the first episode. So first off, I do want to talk about Falcon's fight sequence uh, at the very start of the episode. So uh, this fight sequence was, to me, the moment where I realized, even in the trailer, that they were really putting their best foot forward to make this as good as an episode as possible, as good a series as possible. I think that before that moment, right, before I saw that first trailer, I wasn't sure what to expect from a TV show from the MCU, right? And this show really delivered with this first big scene, as we saw the full scene, um, something that was movie quality. And I'll probably say that a lot over the course of uh, these reactions or these reviews, but um, that's definitely something that I noticed and I think that I, I wanted to highlight here. The next thing is like just the level of skill that it showed of Falcon's character to be able to fly and maneuver and actually uh, pull off some type of op to save uh, a military personnel in this first scene really showed skills that uh, of Falcon that like we, we saw that he was um, able to fly right but this one just seemed like he had a little bit more finesse with his movements and there were like things that seemed like very close calls but he like was able to hold his own against this huge group of military personnel and uh, and save the dude that he was trying to save. So I really, really loved that scene to reintroduce Falcon to us after coming back and after the final fight in Endgame. Similarly, we have a scene with Winter Soldier that takes place. Uh, this is the first scene that he's in. And I honestly thought for a few seconds that uh, that this was him on an op, like pretending to be the Winter Soldier or something like that. Or, uh, or for whatever reason, he was back being brainwashed again but I realized a few minutes in that uh, clearly this had to have been a dream or something because he looked very very different from how uh, how he's been portrayed in later films and stuff so he I mean I noticed later on uh, looking back that his arm was different he had his original uh, arm and then of course at the end of that scene he does say hail hydra that was of course the the final moment where I was like yeah of course this cannot be uh, continuing like this can't be what's happening right now because you know the, as he said himself everything that hydra removed uh or hydra put into his head like was removed at wakanda finally and of course it ended with him waking up 
So this was also a very, very cool scene to see where Bucky was in his headscape. And it was like, it was a very clear like juxtaposition almost of where uh, Cap, or not Cap, uh, where Falcon is, where he's still in the, like doing work for the military, for the government. He's, uh, he's doing different ops and stuff like that. Uh, versus Bucky, who has lost so much at this point, right? He, uh, no, he He's so old compared to the people around him. He spent majority of his life almost all of his life being brainwashed and uh, used as a killing machine, right? So seeing the trauma in his head in a, a different way, right? And I, I'm looking forward to seeing this more, um, was very, very cool. Next, we're gonna talk about Bucky and Yori, their relationship, their friendship, that uh, I'm, I'm curious how many, like how long they've been talking to each other because it can't have been that long since the snap brought everyone back, I don't think. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this is probably maybe a couple of weeks later. So um, I am wondering how long that they've been friends, how long that they've spoken to one another, stuff like that. Um, but that that whole friendship, the, the way that they're interacting, it's like, it's heartbreaking. And I really, really loved that Marvel is showing these consequences that uh, these these characters, these heroes, these these people who seem almost... Like, like they're not, uh, they're not in the same world as us, right? But uh, these characters are very clearly dealing with things that a lot of people might deal with. So um, maybe not this specific situation, but I'm sure um, people in the military have had regrets. They've had um, trauma, and it's actually very common, right? Um, and and being able to deal with that stuff is is a huge challenge for a lot of mil military and like uh personnel and stuff like that so I, I think that this show is really going to show us as like um civilian people who might not necessarily understand or know those types of experiences like clear insights as to what that's actually like um through Bucky and uh and uh Sam through their perspective and how um though they are heroes and I would say that even even Bucky is a hero because he originally was a he was a veteran of the uh civil war or not civil war sorry uh world war one world war two world war two um but regardless like he was a personnel from the U.S. military that was brainwashed that was taken prisoner and uh he was used for 90 years like that, that is what happened to him. So I do still consider him to be a victim in a lot of ways. And even though like he attacked so many people, he killed a lot of people, like it wasn't his fault. So I think that it's going to provide, uh, uh, I mean, Bucky's, Bucky's experience is definitely, is, is most likely not indicative of what most soldiers would go through. But at, at least with, uh, Sam, at least with, um, the new Captain America, which we'll talk about later, um, these people are going to provide interesting perspectives, I think, for those of us who are just um, ignorant or don't have any experience with these types of things. So I'm very, very excited about that because um, WandaVision provided us with a very, very interesting ride, a huge mystery, things like that. But this one is providing us with a lot more um, of a grounded story in a lot of ways, despite all the craziness that might be happening on screen. Um, it's really the story of a couple of soldiers and uh, them trying to live their lives as best they can and uh, struggling in a lot of ways. So I'm very, very excited to see where that goes. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is Bucky's talk with the therapist. I just really liked their interaction. I thought it was really, really fun. Um, and of course, the idea that Bucky is going around saying like, I think it was, I'm James Bucky Barnes and I'm no longer the Winter Soldier. Uh, you're part of my, I'm actually trying to think if I can remember this, you're part of my efforts to make amends or something along those lines. And then the smile, like the fakest smile, that just makes me like really, really laugh. Um, I really, really loved that. And uh, yeah, that, I, I'm like cracking up just thinking about that scene. I hope the therapist continues for the next uh, couple of episodes as well. I, I do hope she doesn't end after um, the first few episodes. I hope she's throughout the entire uh, 
serious because she was actually very funny. Uh, the interactions that she brought about. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to discuss is Falcon and his family. Of course, um, his sister and I think uh, the other people that we met were his uh, his nephews, I think, if I remember correctly. And uh, this was like really heartbreaking um, to see because we find out that Sam doesn't really earn that much money uh, as an Avenger, which is surprising. I feel like if he had spoken to Tony, um, and of course I understand the last few years, of course, but when he originally joined the Avengers, right, it shouldn't have been an issue for Tony to at least help him out with the boat um, and stuff like that. Or, or at the very least, like, why wouldn't Tony go about trying to help the people who were family members of Avengers? I, that's just my opinion. I feel like that that would have happened. I feel like Tony um, would have at least tried to do something like that um, to help the people that no longer have those that lost um, during the war, that, that were lost, right? Um, I don't know. That's just my opinion on that. But regardless, like them going to the bank and being turned away, that like really, really got me. And I think that with this show overall... Um, I think that it's interesting that they are showing uh, perspectives of how, I would say, perspectives of racism. Um, it, it's just, it's interesting. And I think that it's during a time where it kind of makes a lot of sense for a show like this to talk about this stuff. And it's been done really well, I think. It's not over over the top, but it's like it's there and it's present and you're able to view it from the perspective of a character being impacted by it. And that's something that I really, really appreciate. Yeah, the most heartbreaking part of that scene to me um, was after, or actually before they went to the bank. And it was the idea of like, don't give me like the hope. I already gave up on this. I've already come to terms with the fact that I'm not gonna be able to save the boat, things like that. And uh, I'm blanking on if there was other stuff apart from the boat, but I'm pretty sure the boat was the main thing that they were trying to save um, because it was going to be sold. And uh, the fact that afterwards, Sam, who promised that things would work out, was not able to hold up that end of the deal, that end of his promise. That despite the, the, despite the fact that he's fought to save the world so many times, um, he couldn't help his family. That... That really got me. Um, now, the last two things that I want to talk about are specifically with uh, the whole Captain America shield situation. The first one is the scene where uh, Sam gives up the shield, where he puts it in the case in the museum and says that this is where it belongs. I really enjoyed the conversation that he had with Rhodey, and I liked that this was done with two of the um, right-hand men of the biggest, two of the three biggest superheroes uh, at the start of the Avengers, right? I would say the two biggest pillars of the Avengers were Captain America, Tony Stark, and their seconds were Rhodey and Sam. Um, even more so than Bucky, right? Sam's relationship with Cap was a lot more close in towards the end of, uh, towards majority of the time in the MCU because uh, Bucky was on the run or he was um, on ice in Wakanda, right? So um, I feel like those two characters having that conversation, wondering like why, uh, asking why Sam put the shield away. Um, it was very interesting. And I, I thought it was a very uh, cool conversation to have. The, uh, the final moment, the final moment of this episode is when U.S. Agent, uh, I don't know if they named him U.S. Agent, I forget. Uh, I'm pretty sure they just called him the new Captain America, but uh, from what I understand, his comic book name is U.S. Agent. Um, I don't remember his actual name because it didn't seem important. Um, but he's wearing Cap suit, or he's wearing his new, a new suit, but it's a Captain America suit, and he has Cap shield. What I don't understand is why the government could have, couldn't have just created a new shield for him. It it makes no sense for this man to have Cap's shield at all. If they wanted to create a new Captain America, 
fine. They wanted to uh, to bring someone else into the fold that they trusted, fine. But keep the shield in the museum. It's not their shield. They don't have the right to do that. And and even then, the tech, right? The idea that, like, I think there was a statement somewhere in that episode that the shield should belong to the U.S. government um, is ridiculous to me. The shield was created by Howard Stark, right? Um, I would say that the adamantium should belong to, if anything, Stark Industries. If anything, it should belong to Pepper Pods and uh, Morgan Stark, right? It should belong to their family uh, because it's something that uh, Morgan's grandfather created. Um, but that's just my opinion, right? Um, if if it's not going to be kept with... with uh, that, that being said, it's only if it's not going to be kept with uh, Captain America, if it's not going to be kept by Sam, if it's not going to be kept in a museum, if it's not going to be kept by Bucky, if those four people can't have it, it should go to the Stark family because they're the ones that created the shield i don't see how the u.s government has any right to that shield right um it just doesn't make any sense to me um that being said u.s agent he looked like a punk in his suit like it looked it looked bad on his face it did not look right um and i think it just looked really really funny to me um that shot he looked like he looked like a, a schmuck uh, like, I've never used that word before, but that's just the word that comes to mind. He looks like a schmuck. Um, yeah, so that that's all I have to say about him. I mean, uh, I'll talk more about him in the episode two review that I do. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have to say for this episode. I really, really enjoyed it as a reintroduction to these characters. And uh, I really hope to continue to watch these episodes and be super duper enjoyed uh, or uh, happy with the quality of these episodes. I mean, Marvel has done such a good job so far, and, and I'm very, very, like, blown away. Um, the Marvel shows right now are my favorites um, by far of anything that I'm watching, and I'm not really watching too much, but um, definitely the highlight of my week is watching, um, was watching WandaVision, and now it's watching uh, Captain America, or I keep saying Captain America, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, it's just such a high quality show. It's being what done so well. And uh, yeah, I hope, I, I'm really, really glad to see where this story goes moving forward. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos from me, please subscribe. And if you have any like uh, ideas of what I should talk about in the future, please let me know as well. Like the video if you enjoyed watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.